And finally, um, I want to talk about why women's history matters. And um, my premise is that history in and of itself, just as a, as a, as a subject, plays a role in shaping our identities. Um, we, we actually have 11 grandchildren ranging from 16 to um, uh, twins who just turned three two days ago. Um, and the 16-year-old's mother is a Swiss citizen. They're actually in Switzerland now. Um, the three-year-old twins who have uh, brothers and sister who are six, so there are two sets of twins in that family, um, their mother is Haitian American, married to one of my sons who actually uh, looks more like the um, Irish um, uh, English side of the family than my heritage, which was a mix of, 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 of Welsh and Eastern European. Um, but, the, but, you know, all of them, history is, knowing their history is, is and they're, they're interested in that. They're curious about that. They want to know about that, like who I am, where did I come from, and how does that shape who, who, who I'm going to be. Um, Balin and Quinn and Granger and Archer um, are, are mixed race. And so, you know, their identity as, as against our other grandsons who aren't, um, are, and they're aware of that. They're aware of the, you know, the dark-skinned grandsons and the white-skinned grandsons are, are, because there's been so much co uh, conversation about George Floyd, are really aware of how their identities are shaped by something uh, that should be really irrelevant, which is the color of their skin. But again, it's the history. And because the history that we've been taught and the history that is part of the popular narrative that people know about or that documentaries get made about um, leave out women, um, that, that has a huge psychological factor. And so I made a whole list of why women's history matters. Um, because as you can read, girls and boys and women and men cannot be duped into thinking. And again, it's that being duped into thinking we have to prove ourselves over and over again. Women are the majority, 5.5 of the population. Because women should get credit where credit is due. And we've seen the movies like the African-American computer um, uh, geniuses with the space flights. So we get some of that, but it's not sort of on the tip of people's tongue or part of their ordinary conversation. Because women's history helps us make sense of the world. Because women's history is chock full of stories. And I really want to put in a plug now. I've been a fierce advocate um, for nonfiction for many, many years. And, and I mean nonfiction that is vetted, nonfiction that is fact-based. Um, and, and, and I'm not at all, and I, I think it's, it's, and I think if, if you're going to teach women's history through fiction, or if you're going to teach women's history through, I don't know what it's called nowadays, but they used to be called blended books or faction um, when I was um, teaching for many, many years, um, I'm, I'm very wary. Always make sure you, you, and even books that use illustrations instead of photographs, I think it's so important to interrogate that with students, to talk about, read the author's note, you know, what is true, what is made up, and all responsible authors that I know who write will in fact disclose in their author's note, and I'm a fanatic about reading author's notes, um, what they've made up. And I think it's so important for, from a very early age for um, students and, you know, adults to begin to understand that because it, it matters. It's consequential. And there, there are things that, you know, that we, that, that we, we can know as, as best we can know them. Um, but that there, there is some, um, there is a process that we need to go through in evaluating as, as best we can, what, what is the reality as we know it. So, and a really good example was this um, series that was just done on Madam C.J. Walker that just had me sliding under my chair because um, I actually had gone to Indianapolis and researched her book in her archives. It was sort of funny, I showed up in the morning at the Indianapolis Historical Society 
and the librarian I asked to look at uh, the, their collection of Madam C.J. Walker material, and she said, you can't, it's closed, it's off limits. And I said, why? And the librarian said, because Alex Haley is writing her biography, you know, the author of Roots. And I said, but he's dead. And the woman looked, of course, horrified, but it turns out before I was going to spend a whole day in the library, I always ate breakfast, which I usually don't do. And so I'd eaten breakfast that morning in the hotel and the TV had been on and Alex Haley had died that night. So he really had just died, which I'm sorry for, but it meant that I had full access to um, Madam C.J. Walker's, you know, I held her um, you know, application for her passport and all, all her materials. But that series was a travesty. And um, if you want to know more information about that, her granddaughter, great, great granddaughter, Alilia Bundles, she's on Facebook and she just had an article in Vanity Fair. And it was her uh, adult biography that that series was supposedly based on. And she's written quite eloquently about how distorted um, and just awful that series was, which is an example. And I was thinking of Elidia while I was watching, and I thought, oh my God, she must be going crazy. So beware, beware, remember the raised eyebrow. Um, because women's history casts a female gaze on male history, and that notion of female gaze is used in the art world, but it, it allows if you're looking at women's history, then you begin to look at, okay, well, let me look through a women's perspective about, let's say, this decision to go to war, for example. Because women's history provides role models for future generations, because half history or male-centered history cannot represent the whole of history, because women's history is an antidote to stereotypes, stereotypes barriers, and misogyny, to self-doubt and self-deprecation, because women's history causes a rethinking of standard histories, a rethinking of standard